Hello, this is Minder Chant. In the second lecture on setting goals, uh, we're going to connect goal setting with the creation of vision and mission, as well as the development of business strategy using the balance scorecard approach. And vision, mission, goals, and strategy are all within the planning management function in the POLC framework. Once you develop the vision and mission, you need to formulate business strategy to achieve them. And however, once you decided the kind of strategy that you want to take, you still need to carry them out with actions. And this is referred to in balance scorecard as strategic initiative. But how do you know that you have been successfully achieving uh, the strategy that you have developed? You need to set strategic objective. And this is um, basically the goals that we have been discussing for, um, for quite a while. And the balance scorecard approach is really trying to link vision, mission with strategy and strategy with strategic objective and the action that would help to achieve those objectives of various business strategy. And balance scorecard is considered uh, one of the very popular um, approach uh, under managerial uh, accounting. It was developed by a Harvard professor, Robert Kaplan, and a colleague of him, David Norton. Um, this framework tried to translate organization's mission and vision statement and the overall business strategy into specific quantifiable goals and objective to monitor and measure the organization's performance in terms of how various strategic initiatives are achieving those goals. So what the balance scorecard tried to do is translate the vision into something uh, that's actionable. Also try to communicate and linking the, the vision with those activity. And it's used for business planning and controlling. It will also provide feedback and learning within the organization. Uh, here you will find uh, a few Harvard Business um, Schools article. Uh, the first one is the balanced scorecard measure that drive performance uh, published in 1992. Uh, this, the balanced scorecard is actually a book from Harvard Business Press. A photo of our article four years later is called Using the Balanced Scorecard as Strategic Management System. The Balanced Scorecard linked uh, performance measure. Um, we try to measure the performance of an organization from four perspectives. The first is customer perspective. We're going to ask questions like how do customers see us? From the internal process perspective, we're going to ask questions like, what must we excel at? From the innovation and learning perspective, the question is, can we continue to improve and create value? And from the financial perspective, the question is, how do we look uh, in terms of a performance to shareholders? Uh, this is more financial reporting. Um, related to the financial statements, mainly. So if we put it together, um, you will find out those four perspectives from, um, from customer, which is external, to the business process, that's kind of internal, and from learning and growth, which is more future looking, and to the financial uh, measure, which tends to measure uh, the past performance, the history. So we pretty much covered uh, the external and internal, as well as the past and the futures. In terms of the, the measures, um, it, we can 
in terms of the metrics that we use, uh, such as laid out here. And the first is objective. What's the objectives? And the second is the KPI or measures and that you will use and the target that you try to achieve. And finally, the initiative that you would um, you would take on in order to achieve uh, this objectives or goals. There's a uh, methodology which has been developed by uh, Kaplan and Norton uh, later on uh, after the balanced scorecard is called uh, strategic map. And in strategic map, we really try to emphasize uh, the links um, among this four perspective. And as you can tell, this um, there's a kind of causal relationship or dependency. For instance, when you try to run your business process, you rely on your organization's capacity, which means your, your um, human resources, your proprietary uh, intellectual property, etc. And that's where the innovation and the growth came from. And the process, which is internal, eventually will help you to serve the customer. And if you make your customer happy, eventually you're going to have better uh, financial performance. So you can see there's, um, there's a dependency among those four perspectives. And this is how we would kind of lay it out in the metrics, like what's the objective, how we're going to measure it, what's the target, and what's the initiative that we're going to take uh, to help us to reach the target. Okay, you can read some of the detailed description here to understand what those column heading stands for. And this is a very detailed uh, example uh, of how the strategic map can be developed and for an organization uh, where we stated the vision and mission up front and also the strategic themes and the result that we expect from those strategic themes. And also we're kind of identify critical business, critical process and or strategic objective um, within the firms and how they may be related to each other through this link in the so-called strategic map. Let's just take an example to kind of understand what's measure, target, and initiative. For instance, uh, to improve the knowledge and skill of the employee, we need to have employee development plan as a measure, uh, as a way to achieve that. But what's the target? Uh, we want to have 95% of those plan to be in place. And so what kind of um, initiative you're going to develop in order to get there? And one is the product and marketing training programs that you're going to uh, put in place in order to further develop your employees' uh, knowledge and skill. And that's the initiative. So this gives you kind of a good example of how to use the strategic map in as well as the balance scorecard in terms of measuring the, uh, the performance of a firm in achieving its business strategy and in support of its vision and mission. And just like balance scorecard is tied to performance measure, uh, and broadly speaking, if you don't use balance scorecard, you still have to conduct uh, performance evaluation. And the performance evaluation should be tied to your business goals or objective. Uh, if we may use the, the PDCA cycle, uh, or circle, uh, plan, do, control, and act. 
um, we can find out that it, when you, after you plan something, you will set the goal um, for the plan, and then you will perform um, what you have planned, and that will be considered the performance. If you compare the planned goals and the performance of your um, activities, which is due here, then you can identify whether you have achieved a goal or not, whether there's a gap. That's the control function. If there's a gap, then we need to take proper actions um, in terms of improve our process, improve the employee's training, improve even our planning process. Certainly, if the employee meet or exceed the goal uh, in terms of their performance, then we need to reward them properly. And so that's the PDCA uh, circle. We should use performance evaluation as a constructive process to acknowledge the performance of the employee. And because through this process, we can build trust, maintain credibility, motivate the employee, uh, try to clarify expectation, identify the strengths and weakness in the employee's capability, training, or our business process. And one thing which is very important when you try to um, address the issue of a gap, uh, you need to differentiate whether it's a people's issue or systems issue. If it's a people's issue, then um, you may need to um, kind of talk to the employee to see what they can do to do better. But sometimes the lack of performance uh, or be below standard performance may be due to system issues. Here, system issue may be lack of training, lack of organizational supports, and or other issue which we shouldn't blame the employee for that. And eventually to go back and then remove those system issue that's blocking the employee to perform properly. Sometimes we refer to performance management as part of the organizational control uh, mechanism. Um, a sim simple model for organizational control uh, consists of four steps. One is to establish standard and goal. Then we will measure the performance of employees' actions. The third step is compare the performance to the standard and goal that we have set previously. And the last is to take corrective actions. Uh, let's look at uh, using punch card to measure the employees' uh, number of hours work and or their performance. Um, for instance, um, for step one, establish standard and goal. Everyone has to uh, to be at work, um, have to work 40 hours a week. That's step one. And they need to punch in and punch out. That's how we will measure their performance or attendance in this case. And we'll check the time card, the data collected through the time cards at the end of the week. Uh, that's calculating and uh, measuring the uh, and actually uh, use the performance gathers to compare that with the standard and goal. So if the employee um, may not, um, um, for instance, um, may not punch out for lunch, then you would need you may need to give them a hard time, to, uh, write them an email memo to remind them to follow the rule. Uh, that will be a corrective actions. And for managers, uh, you 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 may give managers a hard time if their employee, their subordinates are working more hours than planned, which means you need to pay overtime, uh, sometimes unnecessary overtime if that's the case. 
then um, it, it's probably the uh, the planning and scheduling of the work hasn't been done properly by the manager. And that's step four. There's some guidelines that um, you may want to review uh, in terms of when you need to give feedbacks uh, in a performance appraisal meetings. Uh, before the meeting, you may want to ask the employee to complete a self-appraisal uh, and try to find the kind of a private area for to conduct uh, such performance appraisal meeting. During the meeting, uh, make sure you recognize the effective performance through specific praise and also give the employee the opportunity to talk, to explain, show sympathy and support if they're underperforming and set new or revised goal and create an action plan for the futures. And after the formal meeting, um, you should continue to give the employee periodical and frequent, sometimes informal feedback. And we mean to also follow through on the goals that were set uh, in the meeting. There was a popular um, trade book. It's a very little, little book, uh, just probably less than a hundred page and, and and use storytelling to talk about uh, performance evaluation. Uh, it's called The One Minute Manager. Um, and this is the summary of the approach, which is kind of a simplified uh, approach in terms of performance uh, evaluation, but it could be uh, a, a very effective one. Uh, basically, you just spend an hour uh, to set goals with your employee. Uh, the the goal should be on one sheet and can be read in one minute. And then you would evaluate uh, the goals uh, with your employee. If the goal is achieved uh, or part of the goal has been achieved, then you will proceed to praise the employee for one minute uh, that's where what the title of the book the one minute manager came from if somehow they have not achieved the goal they did not achieve the goal uh, I, i'm not going to say you lose then you would uh, talk to the employee um, allow them to go back to uh, to redo it to meet the goal or you can certainly proceed to one minute's uh, reprimand. So let's just look at it. This one minute's phrasings and one minute's reprimands are very similar. Let's just look at this um, enlarged uh, portion of the one minute's praising. Uh, you try to praise the behaviors with true feeling and you try to praise uh, as soon as what has been what has been done. Uh, kind of re require such praise. You try to be very specific. You try to tell the person what they did right or how you feel about it. Encourage the person with your true feeling and eventually shake hand. And that's pretty much uh, the one minute's praising. Uh, for the reprimand, um, it, it is uh, important that you would uh, reprimand the behavior not the person okay the behavior um is not the same as the person okay you you shouldn't say john you're 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 um you're not really working out uh, you just say john that what you did and uh it's not meeting our standard and this is how potentially let's review what's going on let's see how can i help you uh to make it work so you can meet the target and become a, a very effective employee within the firm So this is actually all part of the so-called performance management um, activity. And it is actually a cycle, a process. Uh, we start with planning. Then we monitor the progress and performance continuously. 
at the meantime um, we will engage in developing the employee's ability to perform through training and assign proper work for them based on their capability and we would actually rate periodically uh, the employee's performance and we will summarize it and we uh, talk to the employee and if the performance is good we will reward the employee if somehow there's a bad behavior or below standard performance then we may need to find out what's wrong with it and potentially um, some penalty may apply and definitely we mentioned the whole purpose of the performance management or performance review is not particularly rewarding or penalizing people but to see what we can do to take corrective measures uh, to improve the systems to develop the employee and in performance evaluation eventually uh, we need to talk about the reward systems or incentive plan uh, because without the reward people may not be motivated to do certain work and the reward system in many organizations are paying off for behavior other than uh, they're seeking um, so sometimes uh, you you may reward people for certain um, behavior, but um, you may not be getting the result uh, that you wanted. And this is where you need to be very careful in terms of design, not just the measuring system, the, the goals that you have to set, but also the reward system. Um, so for an organization to act upon its member, the, the formal reward system should be positively uh, reinforced uh, desired behavior. Remember uh, Pavlov um, reinforced um, motivation study uh, pretty much say the same thing. Uh, we need to have a reward system that will possibly reinforce desired behavior. Um, and there's a classic paper by Stephen Kurt um, on the folly of rewarding A while hoping for B. Um, this is actually a very interesting article. Basically, we're hoping for B, but we're rewarding A. So we're not really rewarding the right um, behavior or uh, that we desire. In his article, um, he lists in a table um, what we were hoping for and but we often uh, reward. Um, basically, we hope for long-term growth and environmental responsibility, but we tend to reward more near-term quarterly earning. Uh, we hope for certainly reward teamwork however a lot of time we only measure the individual effort instead of the team effort and we should try to set challenging stretch uh, objective however uh, a lot of time we often reward people who achieve goals who um, make the number uh, we'll hope for adjusting, downsizing, right-sizing, delaying, or restructuring the organization. But a lot of time we end up adding staffs, adding budget, uh, adding pay point. Uh, this is a link. If you click on it, you would uh, be linked to, I believe it's a wiki document explaining what pay points mean, which is a technical term. We're hopeful commitment to total quality, but um, um, but a lot of time we may be shipping on schedule. However, we may ship uh, product with defects. Okay, so this kind of give us example of uh, in an organization a lot of time what we're rewarding is really not what we're hoping for. 
So the reward system, um, if you want to realign your reward system, you need to do three things. Realign your reward system to your, to your uh, business strategy, to your vision, to your mission. Uh, we need to define performance in actionable terms. We need to measure the right thing using the right measure. Uh, we need to reward the right things and use the right reward. Okay, so the last two are important one. Uh, this is actually from a book called Reward Systems um, by Steve Kerr and his colleague. Okay, this is the conclusion of our lectures on balance scorecard and performance evaluation and rewarding system. And also conclude the whole unit uh, on goal setting. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.